What's going on? IAQ Josh here with not only another video, but our very first product review. Play the horns. We don't have horns. What I want to talk about today is the Ryobi 18 volt electrostatic sprayer. This is one of three models that I know Ryobi has. So let's get started. All right, guys, so to kick things off, we're gonna talk about five critical factors when it comes to reviewing this Ryobi sprayer. The first is going to be build quality. How strong is this device, both on the outside as well as the inside? Number two, maneuverability. How well can I actually wield this device out in the field? Number three, application coverage. Does it do as intended? Does it indeed wrap around object? Number four, distance to target. How far back can I be from the medley of objects out there in the field and still gain adequate coverage? Last but not least, number five, battery life. Why? Because it's a battery operated device and we need to know how long this battery operated device will actually last in the field. All right guys, so let's get into talking about the build quality. While the outside of this device may look great, let's see if the inside of the device can hang. So let's get started. Let's open this puppy up. I've already taken the liberty of taking most of these screws out, so we've only got three. All right guys, so let's talk a little bit about what is inside of this device here. We've got everything from quality braided hoses to metal fasteners, as opposed to the cheap plastic parts that I think we've all seen over the years. My first impression looking inside of the, uh, the housing, or shall we say under the hood, everything here looks to be pretty solid. You've got a solid trigger assembly. Sounds wonderful. It seems like if you needed to, you could actually pretty easily take this device apart and service it if you had to. Uh, one of the other things that I noticed here is uh, where you've got this braided hose, you've actually got a, a plastic fitting or a housing around this hose just to make sure that you do get a true 90 degree as opposed to a kinked line. All right, so let's take a look at the nozzle cartridge here. So we've got three nozzles, which are gonna be our varying sizes of application that's going to come out of this device here. All of them look to be real nicely done. Looks like it's a very serviceable part. Metal construction. We've got solid roto molded plastic here, just like we have on the outside of this unit about as solid as it gets, so I'm impressed with this. And then what Ryobi also did, which is real neat on their part, is they included this real nifty tool that will actually allow you to take apart this whole cartridge and actually soak each individual nozzle, as well as all the corresponding parts, inside of warm water and soap, which is basically what they tell you to do in the manual. All right, so one other thing that Ryobi did is they included this electrostatic strap that you would actually place on your wrist. This will actually ground you to the unit that you're uh, utilizing here. All right, so let's take a moment to talk about the battery. This is the Ryobi OnePlus battery that they use to connect a multitude of tools that they have out there. The nice thing is this device does come with a battery. Not all power tools do, this one does. And then the great thing about it is pretty much a universal battery when it comes to being able to utilize this battery on an array of other Ryobi products that you may already own. All right, so one other factor that I want to talk about real quick is the varying nozzle sizes. You're going to get 65, 85, and 160 microns out of these three nozzles. So essentially what would happen is you would pick the one that's going to be best suited for your job. All right, so let's talk about another thing that Ryobi did well. Again, talking about build quality and truly having this device last, Ryobi was kind enough to place this electrostatic on off or power switch within this clear covering that they have. This is great because again, we wanna keep these liquids out of these electrical components and this is how you do it. All right, so in closing, build quality, it meets my needs. I think it'll meet most of your needs as well. So I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. All right guys, so what we're gonna be talking about next is not only the maneuverability of this electrostatic sprayer, but also the application coverage. But before we get into that, let's talk safety. We've obviously, as you can see here, we've got my Papper respirator on, got a Tyvek suit, I've got these beautiful orange nitrile gloves. We've also got a FLIR E85 thermal camera going 
You'll see me pan to that here shortly where we can see the temperature of what you see in the background here, which we've got uh, just a Makita case, some Harley Davidson apparel, an odor product, a lovely coffee mug, as well as all purpose joint compound. I could have picked any other six objects. I just chose to pick these here. This is for demonstration purposes only. Let's get to it. All right, so overall maneuverability with this is pretty self-explanatory. I can very easily switch hands while staying grounded. I can already see that what I'd want to utilize is what I anticipate Ryobi had in mind here with these two built-in clips, which is probably going to connect to a shoulder strap of some kind. So you've got an old laptop case or something like that. You want to take the shoulder strap off. Something tells me it can pretty easily fit on here. Then you can just walk around with it weighted here at your side and just maneuver around. So overall on maneuverability, I'd give it a great big thumbs up. All right, so now let's talk application coverage. I've got the sprayer on the low setting, which is gonna be the 65 micron setting. We've got the infrared camera going in the background here. So let's go ahead and give these six objects here a spray on the low setting. Let's go ahead and just do a short but sweet pass. We should see the front of these objects slowly increase in intensity with the blue and purple and darker hues that are going on. Uh, previously, we had the orange and red colors, and we can see that it's doing just that. Over on the far left, the Makita toolkit, you're starting to see more of the darker colors coming on the front, indicating that we were successful in getting some coverage of the product. But, 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 covering the front of the product and now covering the back of the product, are gonna be two different things. So let's take a look and see how well we got some wraparound coverage. Not really seeing anything on the back side. On the side of the Harley Davidson apparel, I'm not really seeing anything on the back of this product, not really seeing much. So before we go ahead and write off this product's ability to create a wraparound effect, let's go ahead and try to apply, again, on the low setting, 65 microns, we're gonna go a little bit closer to the objects this time and see if we achieve a better result. On the back here, same thing. We didn't get too much coverage, nor there, a little bit there. Not too much wraparound here. All right, so even on this second go at a lot closer distance to the object, we're still not quite seeing that full wraparound effect. Best recommendation would be to apply on one side, potentially go around and apply on the other side. And through both of those applications, you should have some very good and adequate coverage. That said, unfortunately, when it comes to the application coverage, we're gonna have to give this a big thumbs down as this product does not work as advertised, achieving a thorough enough wraparound effect. Now, if you're sitting here thinking to yourself, what on earth is a Micron? Wonderful. We're gonna cover just that in this science breakout session. All right, so let's first discuss what a micron is. A micron, simply put, is a unit of measurement. And to put it in perspective, one micron is the equivalent to one one thousandth of a millimeter. So now when we talk micron, we are specifically talking about the diameter size of a particle. And to use a more layman's comparison, let's look at a single strand of hair. A single strand of hair will measure 100 microns in diameter. So now let's make a comparison between smaller micron sizes and larger micron sizes. In general, the smaller the micron size or particle, in this case we're talking droplets, the greater its ability to free float for a longer period of time. Whereas when we are referring to larger micron sizes, specifically droplets coming out of an electrostatic sprayer, we're talking about objects that are physically heavier and therefore will not stay airborne as long. To put it in perspective, if we are standing at an equal distance from an object and we applied a smaller micron sized droplet via an electrostatic sprayer as compared to a larger micron droplet size, the smaller droplet sizes would carry for a longer period of time. Whereas the larger micron sizes would tend to be discharged and then drop within a relatively short period of time. Now, where this comes into play is when we think air current. When we have an air current, the smaller micron sizes are more subject to be carried away from the object, which may not be advantageous to what you're trying to accomplish. Now, looking at the larger micron droplets, 
if this was discharged, this would have a greater potential to actually make it to the object as opposed to being caught in the wind current specifically because this is heavier. So you're probably sitting here wondering if that's the case, why did we just use the smallest micron application to spray the six objects that were on my desk? Well, there's a simple answer to that. However, we first need to understand the keynote differences between using the smaller 65 micron setting and the larger 160 micron setting. To make things even easier, let's compare the difference between a 65 micron size and a 130 micron size droplet, the difference being essentially double. Now, looking at the 130 micron size and effectively dividing it by two to get the 65 micron size, what we are actually doing is we are multiplying the output by eight. So 130 divided by two equals 65, but times eight means that we are essentially getting quite a bit more output, which essentially is going to mean better coverage for the objects. And now, because the micron size is effectively smaller, we are going to achieve greater coverage on any given object, simply put, because we can fit more droplet particles onto each surface. Now knowing this information, one factor that we should definitely know, as this could otherwise be potentially catastrophic to what you're doing, is that we want to stand as close to objects as possible while still giving enough distance where we are not saturating these objects. In other words, we want great coverage without overspraying objects. All right, so bringing this science breakout session to a close, there's certainly some other factors that we could discuss, such as spray quality, relative span, etc. However, and for the sake of time, what I'll do is I will include a link below to a website that has a wealth of information speaking just to these factors. Now, back to the review at hand. All right, so now what I wanna talk about is the distance to target. According to Ryobi, you can utilize this sprayer on the high setting up to 10 feet away. So using a Leica Disto measurement device, we're gonna go ahead and measure out about 10 feet, which is right about here. And from this distance, this is the maximum distance, we should be able to see some level of coverage on the six objects that I have laid out. So let's give it a try and then move in close to see how successful we were. So now we did fail pretty miserably, as we can see with how much product is actually on the floor here. Simply put, I'm not seeing any product that actually made it to the surface here. All right, so now what we're gonna go ahead and try is a closer distance. At this point, we're gonna move into about six feet from the target. We're at five foot 11, so pretty close to six feet. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try this same application on the high setting and see if we can actually get some of this solution to these surfaces this time around. All right, so let's come on in and take a look here. So we can see we've definitely got some product, some solution here that did make it to the surface of these objects. Not much at all. We do have a little bit there on the Harley Davidson calendar. But overall, we've definitely got quite a bit of droplets here on the surface. Needless to say, we've got a ton of solution on the floor. Overall, I cannot recommend spraying this product from a distance even greater than what looks to be a couple of feet. So now we see even at a distance of six feet, which might I add is four feet lower than what Ryobi says is the maximum distance that you can utilize this sprayer at, we see that this device unfortunately falls short of delivering on what it states that it can. That said, I'm gonna have to give this a thumbs down as well. All right, so when it comes to battery life with this sprayer, that's one thing that Ryobi seemed to do very well on. Refill after refill after refill inside of this sprayer, we were able to just keep on going and keep on going. For most applications, I think you're gonna be quite all right in battery life, and as a result, Let's give it a thumbs up. All right, so one closing note that I wanna share with everyone is whether you are utilizing a $350 sprayer or even a $25,000, $30,000 sprayer, one factor remains the same. We, as the applicators, 
should not rely so heavily on only applying products to one side of a surface and hoping that it does indeed achieve that wraparound. Instead, and this isn't just me saying this, this is industry experts that I've consulted with, the recommendation remains the same to attack it from multiple sides. Let's look at this desk, for example. As opposed to just spraying the front of it and hoping that the product does its true wraparound abilities, I should approach it from the front, I should approach it from the sides, I should approach it from underneath, because that's gonna be the only way that we can ensure adequate and thorough product coverage. All right guys, so bringing our first ever product review to a close, the Ryobi 18 volt electrostatic sprayer, this one being the half gallon model, even though it only scored three out of five thumbs up, bringing it in at about a 60 percentile, I have to say, this is still a good choice if you are a consumer looking for a way to apply a disinfectant to the multitude of surfaces within your residential home. That said, if you're a professional looking to utilize something like this to maybe apply within an office environment or a retail store, this is probably not the product for you. All right guys, so that concludes my very first product review. I do hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you liked or loved this video, please give me a great big thumbs up. Want to see more product reviews as well as information I have to share? Please do subscribe to my channel. I will see y'all around.